Hi and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today I'll be doing a short review and a long tutorial of a Casio GA110. But before I do I just wanted to thank Silvertime Watch Store for supplying this watch and if you want to check them out you can click on the link in the description. Also in the description you will find a table of content with time codes so you can jump to specific parts of the video and different functions of the watch if you don't want to watch the whole thing. However if you're new to this watch and you just bought it I would advise you to watch the whole video for the first time so you can get acquainted it with all the setups and all the functions of the watch and then later use the table of content as a reference so you can jump to specific functions that you sometimes forget anyways going back to the watch uh, this is the GA110 like I said and that's part of the uh, Casio's uh, extra large collection which started off with the GA100 which became an instant success and one of the best-selling G-Shocks and I, re I already did a tutorial on that model and just by the number of views that that video got uh, I, I can see that there's a lot of them uh, in circulation so uh, this watch is almost identical to the GA100 uh, also in success but also in execution so the the bezel the case the strap, the buckle, everything is exactly the same. Even the module, the functions, and the way you operate this watch is exactly the same as the GA100. The only difference is the screen layout. Another thing that they have in common is that people that I know that have this watch, 95% of them do not understand half the functions that the watch has. And this is, hopefully, this, this video is going to change that. Another thing that's in common with the GA100 is that the illumination is done uh, with a little light bulb in the bottom that shines on, onto the display. So there's no backlight for the digital part of the screen. And that makes nighttime visibility a bit of a problem. Uh, now it depends on, there are a lot of variations of this watch, so it depends on the variation that you select whether the hands are going to be more or less legible. Also if you go for the negative display, it's not going to be very legible and easy to read. This is why I chose this one for the tutorial because this one, in my opinion, is the most legible. Now this watch does have a slight advantage over the GA100 because, as you can see, the GA100 has no loom whatsoever. However, this watch does have some loom on the tips of the hands. And I will put a video where you'll see how it looks. And it's actually a quite a good loom, but it's just such a small amount that I don't know how readable it's going to be. But at least they put some unlike the GA100. Now when it comes to the specs, this watch is large, just as you would expect from a G-Shock and especially from a G-Shock that belongs to the extra large uh, collection. So uh, the diameter is 51.2 while the lug to lug is 55. The thickness is about 17 millimeters, but being a G-Shock, it's relatively light at 72 grams. Uh, I like the strap because it's massive and it has this double tang buckle, which really adds to the coolness and also the feeling of toughness. Now, as you can see, the buttons are really are really knurled with these uh, with this structure, so you can really feel them under your fingers, and they're really differentiated from the rest of the case. However, they are a bit hard to press, although compared to the G9000 Mudman, they're really easy to press. Uh, then you have this crystal that's that's uh, recessed uh, compared to the bezel, which means that the scratches should be kept at minimum. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the watch. Now when it comes to the functions, uh, this is an ordinary battery operated G-Shock, so it doesn't have a fancy solar panel nor atomic timekeeping, uh, meaning that it's just a regular G-Shock. However, it does have a huge amount of functions that are standard on these newer G-Shocks, I mean the newer generations. So uh, naturally you have the time, the month, the date, the day of the week and everything. Then you have a 24-hour stopwatch and on this watch it goes down to the precision of 1 1,000th of a second. It also has two modes, lap mode and split mode and it has an average speed calculation which we'll show in detail when we, when we come to that. Then you have a 24-hour timer uh, that can be set down to a minute and it also has an auto repeat function. Then you have a world time function with 31 time zones and 48 cities. And finally you have five alarms with one of them being a snooze alarm. So a pretty standard set of functions with a few quirks like the speed calculation and the auto repeat timer which is an excellent, excellent function. Anyways, now let's just move on to the, to the setup. 
Now, uh, before we move on uh, with the setting up of the time and time zone and everything, I just wanted to first do uh, to show you how to how to check the hand alignment and how to correct it if it's wrong. Because you want to do that before you set up the watch. Because if you do it after, like you, you'll be setting up the watch and the hands will be showing nonsense. Now, I messed up both of these hands on purpose just so you can see how to detect it and how to correct it. Anyways, uh, at least that is easy on this model because uh, the analog hands, the hour and minute hand, uh, they always, on this watch, they always show the current time. No matter what function you're in, no matter what mode you're in, and no matter what you're doing with the watch, these two will always show the current time. So, when you're in the home screen, and this is the home screen, uh, if the digital time that's displayed here is not shown on the analog part, that means that the hands are messed up. So, this has to match with this. Now, sometimes this watch is going to have a date displayed instead of the time like this so all you have to do is bring back the time instead of the date and you do you toggle it with the lower right button in the home screen so pressing the lower right button as you can see you toggle between the time display and the date and month display so we check this watch as you can see it should it should say 625 but it actually says 740 something meaning that these hands are not show, showing the correct time they need to be recalibrated then you have to check the small subdial here and this subdial while in the home screen should always point to this here this is a zero so it should always be aligned with this line however as you can see over here it's going upwards so this is messed up as well so if you checked and uh, this matched with the time shown here and this hand showed right here at zero you can skip this part and just go to the to the adjusting of the time however this can happen when batteries get low when uh, somebody changes your battery because the watch then resets thinking that it's midnight although it's not so a watchmaker that doesn't know how to do it is just going to put a battery in and the watch is going to be messed up you're going to have to do the hands correction okay so how do you do it while in the home screen you press and hold the lower right button for more than five seconds so press and hold and the watch is going to enter the hand setting mode as you can see it says h set here hand setting and the first uh, uh, dial or hand that you're going to set up is the small sub dial that's why this is blinking sub and what, when you're calibrating, you have to put that hand to show at 9 o'clock or 50 as displayed here. Now, the way you move this hand is only by the lower button and it will not uh, a, a speed scroll or move when you hold it. So you really need to press it every time to move it. This is why you have to be careful not to pass the, the reference point or else you're going to have to go all the way around and that's a bit bothersome. Okay, so now let's just get it to exactly nine there and now we've corrected this hand and this is how it's supposed to point while you're in the hand setting mode okay now uh, if these hands were correct you would just press the adjust button and you would exit the hand setting mode however since our hands hour and minute hands are also messed up we have to set them up and the way you scroll between this and this is with the mode button so pressing the mode button, now we're going to set, be setting up these hands. And as you can see, this screen here now doesn't say sub, but it shows what the time should be displayed with these hands. As it's showing 0, 0, 0, it means that these hands have to point at midnight. If they do not point at midnight, we need to correct them. And as you can see, they just passed midnight, so they're not. Now, uh, with these hands, it's a bit easier because you can move them uh, forwards and backwards. So both ways and not only that but you can do the speed scrolling so you press and hold the button and the hand is just going to start moving until you press any of, of these two buttons so we can go backwards to set it up to midnight there you press and release and it's going to keep going until you you stop it with any press of the button there and now we just move a couple of more and there we just aligned it and this is how the watch should look in the hand setting mode when everything is aligned. Now that we've completed everything, we press the adjust. And now uh, this, these hands, the hours and minutes, should point uh, at the time that's going to be displayed here. I mean, they should match the time displayed here. And this little hand should point at zero. So now once it completes the calibration, I mean, once it, it uh, rotates all the, all the hands, we're going to check if everything's okay. Let's just wait for it to complete. 
and there let's toggle back this time as you can see it should read 629 it reads 629 and this hand is pointing to zero where it should now everything's set up with the hands of this watch they're pr perfectly aligned now let's move on to the home screen and uh, the setup of the watch so while in the home screen like i just showed you can press this to toggle between the the current time and the date that's displayed here also the watch is going to display the dst setting whether it's on or off which is summertime it's going to display the seconds it's going to display the day of the week now uh, pressing the upper button is going to activate the backlight and as you can see like i said it's just an a little led uh, down there now i'm just going to try to demonstrate although it's really not that special it's more detracting than helping but as you can see this watch really does the loom really shows so you were able to read the time at least like that now this watch also features an auto light or automatic illumination and to activate that you press and while in the home screen you press and hold the light button for more than three seconds and there as you can see over here it just wrote a light or automatic light and now when you tilt the watch to your face like you put a level and you tilt it to your face the watch is going to turn on the light as you can see so straight tilt it the light is on okay now we're going to turn that thing off you turn it off exactly like you turned it on so pressing and holding this for more than three seconds now since this is not a solar model it doesn't have a solar panel so it cannot detect whether it's in the darkness or in the light uh, in order for it to save the battery uh, this auto light is going to turn itself off after six hours so then you have to turn it back on if you want to use it and that's it now uh, pressing the adjust button is not going to do anything however if you press and hold the adjust button you're going to enter the setting mode for the for the main time and now there are some uh, a lot of things that you need to set up so the first thing that the watch is going to offer is your home city or time zone and this one you have to do correctly because if you miss this one uh, all the world time uh, cities in, in 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 that function in the world time function are going to be incorrect so you have to select uh, the the time zone that corresponds to your time zone and you can go backwards and forwards so it means east and west so let's just select my time zone which is paris or or berlin there berlin okay once you've set up uh, the home city so you always change values with these two buttons and you move through different values with this i mean through different modes of the, of the adjusting so pressing the mode is going to ask you for the dst whether the dst is on or off which is summertime since uh, now it's august and the dst is on you toggle it with the lower right button there and as you can see when the dst is on you will have this dst uh, stay on the screen okay pressing the mode we move on over here you can choose between a 24 and 12 hour display so you can have a 12 hour display then the watch is going to show you the am pm time or if you have 24 you again toggle it with this you will have the military time pressing the mode again you move to the seconds and now if you press the second if you reset the seconds after 30 seconds uh like now uh you're going to reset the seconds and the minutes are going to move by one up so if you, you have 32 resetting them after 30 seconds is going to uh, put minutes to 33. however if you reset them while the seconds are below 30 up to 29 like so like if i reset them now the minutes are going to stay the same so this is how you sync with the with the time of the atomic clock pressing the mode you move to the hours now the hours you can move upwards and backwards as you can see and you can also speed scroll pressing and holding is going to speed scroll there now pressing the mode you move to the minutes again backwards forwards let's put it to 36 and pressing the mode again you move to the year again upwards backwards forwards then you go to the month so as you can see eight nine and you move to the date and uh, after that 
you have a couple more things that are to the general usage of, of, of the watch. You have the lights. So over here, you choose the light duration. When it's on one, the backlight is going to stay for one and a half seconds on when you press this upper button. If we toggle it with this lower button to three, LT3, uh, the light is going to stay on for three seconds. So we'll just leave it at three. And that's pretty much it. You you cycle back to the home city. So if, if, if you miss any of these or... Uh, uh, set them up incorrectly just press the mode button until you until you reach them again because it's always going to be cycling there once you've set up the watch you press the adjust button and then the analog hands are going to set up to the digital display there as you can see now the the analog hands are going to get set up the way they should uh, to correspond to this time here and there Okay, now moving on to the first function, and that's the stopwatch. I just changed the time so we can move uh, these analog hands so they're not in the way. So the first function we're going to cover, like I said, is the stopwatch, and it's a 24-hour stopwatch with precision of one up uh, down to one one thousandth of a second. Now, as you can see, this one here says it's lap. Now you can toggle between a lap and a split stopwatch by pressing the adjust button, as you can see. So we'll first cover the split. Stopwatch. The split stopwatch is the classic, classical uh, G-Shock stopwatch that almost all of them used to have and some still do. So pressing the forward button is going to start the stopwatch. Pressing it again is going to stop it and you can reset it. You can also do the split time. So you press the start, you press the adjust which is also a split and the screen will freeze so you can write down the time but the stopwatch keeps going and uh, pressing it again resumes the, the stopwatch and you can do the first and second place so if you have two runners you press the split for the first runner it's gonna display the time now you have to write it down you press the stop it's gonna stop and display the time of the second runner so you can write that down as well and that's it and then you have like I said the lap the lap time so you you toggle with the adjust go to, to the lap stopwatch so now you start the stopwatch and you can stop it and reset it just like that one. However, when you start it and you press the lap button or the, the split button, uh, the watch is going to measure this lap. It's going to display this for 10 seconds while the stopwatch will uh, uh, restart from zero. So this was lap one and you will see after 10 seconds, it's going to resume lap two. There, 12, 13, but it started from zero. Okay, so now we're at 15, 16 and when you press it again, it's going to write down that this is lap two. And again, after 10 seconds, you're going to see that uh, the stopwatch immediately started going for another lap. However, the there, but the screen is frozen for 10 seconds, so you can write down the time. Now, the only problem with this stopwatch is that it doesn't have lap memory, meaning that you need to write down these times manually on a piece of paper or some kind of notebook because it doesn't have it in memory it's not going to store it so once it disappears from this screen after 10 seconds you cannot recall it and that's the only the only bad thing about this stopwatch if it had that it would be probably one of the best stopwatches that casio ever made anyways that's it when it comes to the lap and split now as you if you might have seen this has been jumping all over when we were using the stopwatch and this is the the speed calculation function now i covered this in my ga100 video and i thought i explained everything perfectly however most of the comments that had questions about the speed calculation were about the units so people would usually ask but where do i input whether i'm putting miles or kilometers where do i input that into the watch because this watch can calculate your average speed of a given trip so you can input a trip uh, a distance that you're going to travel you press the start button and when you stop it when you when you get to your destination you stop the stopwatch it's going to display the average speed that you you had during that trip so people would always ask but how do, how does the watch know whether it's kilometers or miles well the watch doesn't have to know that because the watch is only interested in the number that you input and it takes that number into consideration with the time and gives you the speed however the speed is going to be indicated in whatever you used as the distance so if you put if you measure a distance between uh, point A and point B in miles and you input here that number that you got in miles the speed is going to be in miles per hour 
and it's for you to know which unit you used when you measured the distance. If you measured the distance in kilometers and put that number here, the watch only cares about the number. It's going to uh, throw you uh, that, uh, that number per hour, but you need to know what that number means because if you measure in centimeters and input the distance in centimeters, it's going to be centimeters per hour. I don't know if I'm getting if I'm if I'm clear enough about that. Okay. Anyways, by default, uh, you can input any distance that you want, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, we're going to just show you how to read the speed calculation. And by default, this is set up for one, so one mile, one kilometer, one meter. We're, we'll we'll just say it's one mile. So all the speeds that we read is going to be in miles per hour. So let's say if we start this stopwatch, and we're going to do five measurements, so we can see the difference. Uh, data and different speeds and we're going to use uh, pretty common uh, points that are going to be easy to calculate so the first measurement that we're going to do is going to be 60 seconds or one minute because if we do one mile in one minute that means that in one hour we're going to do 60 miles so we're gonna uh, if we stop the stopwatch when we are at 60 or at one minute uh, the the stop the watch should show one uh, should show 60 miles per hour or 60. Now the way you read this watch is that you have these 1000s and they're represented by a little triangle here and I'm going to show you when it gets. Then you have the hundreds uh, from one to nine and then you have the tens and ones over here. So now I'll try to stop the stopwatch right at the minute. If I pass by uh, a slightly, the speed is going to drop. If I go a bit early, the speed is going to rise. Okay, we'll try to hit it at one there. And now, as you can see, uh, we did one mile in one in one minute. Now you look for the 1000 indicator, it's clear. You look for the hundreds indicators, it's clear. So now all you have to do is read this little uh, little circle here. And as you can see, it says 60. The little a needle is pointing at 60. So we were traveling at 60 miles per hour. Now let's just reset. Now we're going to do it in 30 seconds. Now 30 seconds is half the time, which means that the speed is double of what we had. So the speed indicated should be 120 miles per hour. Again, if I miss and let's say uh, click it at 29, uh, the speed is going to increase. If I miss and click at 31, the speed is going to decrease. So take that into consideration. I'll, I'll again try to be as close as possible. So 24, 25. there now i missed by uh, by an end but that's okay okay now again as you can see the the thousands are clear there's nothing here however these hundreds are now having one or first square displayed which means it's a hundred as you can see you have 100 here written 500 so you have 100 200 so now we are reading 100 and 20 or in this case 119 something because i missed the 30 second mark but as you can see approximately 120 miles per hour now let's reset and do the 15 seconds that's going to be again have the speed of this which means double the speed of that so now it's going to be 240 miles per hour if we hit it at the 15 if we pass one mile in 15 seconds 12 13 14 15 there now the watch should like we said display 240 again the thousands are clear and then you have these squares a one two so 100 200 and 30 40 as you can see it's 240 miles per hour so the speed indicator i believe is pretty clear by now okay now let's uh try and do one mile in two seconds because that's really really fast one two there now as you can see we did it in one nine six eight now as you can see you have this little triangle uh, pointing to one thousand that means that now you read the the speed by starting with one thousand so it's one thousand and now you should count these but you don't have to because you have the 500 mark so it's one thousand five hundred six hundred seven hundred eight hundred one thousand eight hundred and thirty eight let's say miles per hour if we do one mile in one minute uh, in one in one second now uh, as you can see because of this the watch has a limit of 1999 miles per hour so uh, if you exceed that speed 
the watch is not going to show you 1999 and that's it because that will be incorrect instead the watch has another display so we'll just do uh, now uh, one mile in less than one second so we'll just start and stop right away so now as you can see the watch has cleared everything but this hand is showing over here and what it says over here under the hand is actually over meaning that you uh, you went over the speed that this watch can 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 display so let's just reset so the hand moves so as you can see it says over here now this over over display is great because once you exceed 1999 miles per hour or kilometers per hour any any speed over that it would be uh, displayed incorrectly however like this the watch tells you yeah you went over 1999 but i don't know how 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 much faster so you know that it cannot display the speed anyways i believe or at least i hope this was pretty clear on how to read the read the time read the speed now the last thing that we need uh, that i need to show you about the speed calculation is inputting the distance so pressing the and holding the adjust button while in the stopwatch mode is going to enter the distance setting so as you can see the display says this and over here you can go upwards and backwards with these two and you can go up to 99.9 .9. and you go with the mode button between the tens and the ones so 99.9 .9, as you can see uh, now this gives you a limitless limitless selection of distances why because you're not just limited to 99.9 uh, uh, miles because if let's say you're gonna do a road trip that's gonna be I don't know 900 and 960 miles you just go to uh, 96 here let's say like this and over here you go to the zero and that, let, that, let's say this is your road trip but your trip is going to be 960 not 96 since you know that that means that you're going to have to add one zero to the speed that the watch displays so if the watch displays 12 as the speed you're going to have to add another zero so i hope that's clear anyways because of this like i said and because of adding zeros uh you can put any distance you want you can have thousands of kilometers over here and it's really limitless anyways this pretty much completes the stopwatch once you've set up the distance you press the adjust button and now the watch is going to measure uh, uh, calculate the average speed for that distance now pressing the mode button we move to the timer now the countdown timer like i said it's a 24 hour timer and if you start it like this when it's on zero you started with this button it's just going to go from 23 59 59 and it's going to reach zero once it reaches zero it's going to start to beep you stop it like this and you reset it like this now you can input any value uh down to the minute so pressing the adjust button and holding it just like when you're setting up the main time the watch enters the setting and now you can use the mode button to choose between hours and minutes there and as you can see hours can go upwards and backwards and the minutes can go upwards and backwards and like I said you cannot set the seconds like let's say on the square G-Shocks and now if you noticed uh, when I was pressing the mode button it also went to this selection now this selection is between a one-time timer or a repeat auto repeat timer now the, you toggle it with the lower button so if you select it like this and exit and now once you start the timer and the timer is going to count down to zero then it's going to beep but it's going to automatically restart itself and it's going to keep cycling like that until you until you stop it manually and reset it manually now this is a great feature and to me even more even more useful than having i don't know 10 alarms or 5 alarms or anything because this is great when you're doing i don't know interval trainings or if you have to take some medication like every 8 hours every 6 hours every 4 hours you just set up that time here put it to auto repeat and start it and the watch is gonna like I said keep cycling and warning you it's gonna beep every time when it reaches zero but it's gonna restart until you manually manually stop it so a pretty useful function we'll just stop it and reset it now going to the next function that's the world time function now in the world time like I said you have 31 time zones and 48 cities plus this UTC now uh, in the time zone in the world time unfortunately unfortunately you can go only one way so pressing the forward button is going to take you uh, due east and you can only go due east you cannot go backwards because 
pressing the back button activates the, the the light which is a shame because it like if you're trying to find the time zone and you skip it you're gonna have to go all the way around to come back so pretty pretty bad that they didn't put a back button for for the for the time zone anyways this is pretty much it when it comes to the world time the only other thing is that you can turn on the dst for each selected time zone manually let's say you select a time zone and you want to turn on the dst or daylight savings time for that time zone you press and hold the adjust button and there the dst for that time zone just turned on the time moved by one hour and as you can see when you move on the others don't have the dst so you can do it for each and every time zone individually there okay now moving on we come to the alarm and like i said this watch has five alarms now uh, while in the alarm mode with this button you cycle through the alarm so alarm one alarm two three four and the fifth one is the snooze alarm which is why it says snz meaning that that alarm is going to keep going going off every five minutes even if you turn it off until you go and manually turn it off here in the alarm screen and finally you have the sig which is the hourly chime now each one of these can be turned on, uh, on or off with the adjust button so when you press the adjust button as you can see the alarm just turned on so you can go to the alarm 2 it says off press the adjust you just turned it on and as you can see as, as long as any of the alarm is on you're going to have the ALM displayed here if you select a snooze alarm the SNZ and you turn that on you're going to have the ALM and the SNZ displayed here. And if you select uh, the hourly chime, so to, you go to the SIG and press uh, the adjust button, you're going to have the SIG on. This is the hourly chime, meaning every full hour the watch is going to beep. Now, uh, to, now these alarms are going to go off at midnight. However, naturally you can select any time you want and you do it just like the, the timer, just like the main time. So pressing the, and holding the adjust button, enters the adjusting mode these are the hours you can go up or down pressing the mode button goes to the minutes again up and down and you can select any time you want pressing the adjust will exit exit the adjusting mode and that's pretty much it pressing the mode button you go back to the main time and this pretty much covers everything and there is to be known uh, when it comes to using this watch now i will also show you how to differentiate a fake from the original because these watches are really faked a lot this is like one of the most often faked g-shocks ever and uh, there are uh, there are some details how you can tell the difference like there's these three dots here and the fakes usually have two then the graphics on g-shocks are always perfect on fakes sometimes the letter are going to be different but it's all complicated and for that you need to be pretty familiar with g-shocks however i'll just show you two that no fake is gonna do no matter how well they're made so the first one is the auto light like i said to turn on the auto light you press and hold this and after five seconds it's gonna write the a light there are some fakes that are even gonna do that they're gonna write the auto light however the auto light is not gonna work so if you bought this watch and you put it straight and you tilt it to your face and it doesn't light up with the a light displayed here that means it's a fake because the fakes haven't been able to figure out how to make the auto light yet so i've never seen a fake that can do that so the first sign of trouble if your watch doesn't do this it means that you're in trouble it's most most probably fake however sometimes some models can have this malfunctioning because that little ball inside can get stuck so it's not a hundred percent sure way to tell it's a fake maybe you just have a watch that has a faulty uh, auto, uh, auto light switch however that's why you have the second thing where the fakes will never do it and that's the test screen so every g-shock when you press these buttons that i'm going to show you is going to uh, light up all the all the segments of the display it's kind of a test screen to see which one are missing or not working however fakes don't do it so how do you do it you press this this so adjust mode and forward at the same time now if you press any of these uh, a, a little sooner than the others it's not going to work so really have to be really precise to press them all at the same time there and as you can see the watch just went into the test screen displaying all the segments and this is something that fakes will not do so if you if your watch didn't have a working a light or this 
that means that it's a fake. If it does, you can be sure that it's an original. Now pressing any of the button is gonna cancel the test screen and you're gonna go uh, back, back to the timekeeping mode. Anyways, this pretty much completes the review and the tutorial for this watch. Uh, so I hope you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe. So thank you for watching and until the next video, bye.